CD Projekt Red is known for taking chances on the popularity of its titles. Following the success of The Witcher 3 and Gwent, the Witcher card game, they have created a standalone single player focused version of Quint called Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Since its release in 2018, the title has now arrived on Nintendo's portable console, and I have to say, Thronebreaker and the Switch make an impressive marriage. Shackles off him. Oh, sword can't eat proper. Dunno, not sure I like that. What if he runs for it? He's worth a heap of coin. Thronebreaker The Witcher's Tales introduces Meeve, the Queen of Lyria and Rivia, as she nearly arrives at her kingdom. However, she is stopped along the way by one of her advisors, Count Caldwell. He explains to the Queen of a group of thieves, called the Strays of Spala, had stolen large amounts of gold from her tax collectors. Deciding to take care of matters herself, the Queen sets out to make an example of the bandits on her land. As the adventure unfolds, Meeve's army discovers the powerful and rapacious kingdom of Nifgard. During the conflict, Meeve makes decisions to test her abilities as an effective ruler of an army. Various outcomes affect gold, resources, and army morale. These choices become more impactful as she has to choose between herself or her loyal followers. On the open road, Meeve can find plenty of resources lying around the map. Those resources can be gold, recruits, or wood, used to unlock new playable cards, upgrade your camp, or use in situations that require them. When it was time to use those resources, opening the camp menu shows everything you need to manage Meeve and her army. Changing up my card deck, reading back on journals I found, and making upgrades to my camp. Upgrades range from Mii's movement speed on the map to winning extra resources after battles. As for the card matches, the most familiar battles to Gwent players are the standard battles with the goal of having a higher level of power in each round while using the same set amount of cards for all three rounds. Though in Thronebreaker, these standard matches are less common and tend to be optional. What CD Projekt has done instead is design these puzzle battles specific to stories that make them dynamic and exciting for a game that is only single player focused. There are many different examples of puzzle battles along with the story quest battles that I wish I can keep talking about, but it's better to say that these battles kept me in contact with the story. The smart decision to turn matches into puzzles definitely kept me immersed more than I expected any card game to pull off. The game also features different cutscenes that broke the monotony of seeing similar scenes over and over again. These range from basic visual novel presentations to a more cinematic experience during pivotal story moments. There are some rather impressive three-dimensional renders of characters that blend well with backdrops to the point that I've mistaken them for 2D hand-drawn animations early on in my playthrough. The soundtrack is also varied and pleasant to boot. Calm and slow tempo strings and wind instruments can be heard reflecting the ambient river flows, animal howls, and birds flying overhead. When the battle started, the music immediately buckles into a frenzy of horns and drums. In between the decisive rounds, the hastened music lowers its volume as the tense card game can be anyone's match. Unfortunately, the amount of polish couldn't distract me from some issues that the game had. Scouting around for resources and card pieces can be confusing when walking off the beaten path. It's not so easy to spot where I'm able to explore or not. I should mention that some of these card battles can be tough as nails. Fans familiar with 3D Projekt Red's talent in storytelling won't be surprised to hear that this title is impressive, but what is surprising is that this title blends three genres into a single cohesive piece. The different appearances of hand-drawn art, or the imitation of it in 3D models, does wonders to create a world that feels alive. The same can be said about the contextual card battles and the full voice work in every scene. If it weren't for card games being a sort of niche or the fact that they can be frustratingly difficult at times, I would recommend this Switch title to everyone. This is a bit of a shame, given that this is the most impressed I've been with a title that goes beyond the core ideas of the series. That being said, Thronebreaker The Witcher's Tales is more than another addition to The Witcher series. It's for anyone who's looking for a challenging and lasting experience which is now delivered on the Switch. Noisy Pixel is giving Thronebreaker, The Witcher's Tales, a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Noisy Pixel is ran by a group of gamers who worked hard to give you news, reviews, previews, and more. Please be sure to check out the written review, as well as subscribe here on YouTube for more future content.